Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. Roger that, Houston. Exiting the lunar landing module now. Making my way down the ladder. Houston and I have reached the bottom of the ladder. I'm about to take one small step for man. One giant leap for man. Ah, crap. Ah. Ah. I can't believe this lunar dust just soaks it up like a sponge. You ever feel like when you want to collaborate with your audio friends and trade files back and forth, if they don't live in the same place you do, you literally feel like you live on another planet? I'm going to show you how to collaborate and trade files back and forth with your friends, even if they live halfway around the planet. It works with any program and any DAW, and best of all, no subscriptions. Yep, it's totally free. So here's the setup. We're putting the finishing touches on a rock song here at the studio. Sounds like this. We got a little bit of a lead up to it, and then the solo comes in right about here. All right, so you get the idea. So we need a guitar solo, but our guitar player doesn't live in the area. And to make matters more complex, he doesn't use the same program we use. We're using Cubase here at the studio. He's working out of Logic. We need to export a working mix. So the first thing we need to do is come up here to our export markers, which determine where or what part of the song is going to be exported. The most important part of this is to make sure that that marker starts at the very beginning of the song. So in other words, when you zoom all the way in, it has to start right at the beginning. So it's really helpful to turn your snap on if it isn't engaged already in your DAW. This just keeps us from accidentally starting a couple of samples too late. Also keep note of the beats per minute of the song. Although this method bypasses the need for that altogether, it's a good idea to give him a heads up on his end. All right, so set your beginning marker and set your end marker to include the song itself. And then we're going to come up here in Cubase and we're going to go to File and we're going to go down to our Export drop-down menu. And we need to do a couple of things here. We're going to title this Shot Down Working Mix in the title area. We're going to come over to the Batch Export section and make sure that not any of the buses or individual tracks, but the entire mix is selected here because we want to send a rough mix to him to work from. We're going to choose um, MP3 as a file type. We could choose WAV file. The drawback of WAVs is they're much, much larger. So as a working file to track with, the WAV is going to be a lot bigger and probably too big for most email attachments, which usually are limited to about 25 meg. So we're going to choose a high-res MP3 to work with for the time being, and we're going to edit the tag to include the title. And we'll just say shot down mix for the time being. And then down here, we want to make sure that the left and right channel thing is ticked and not like mono down mix. For example, if that one's checked, you'll end up with a mono version of your song, which probably for reference would be fine. But we're going to send him stereo information so we can get the entire vibe of the tune. And then we're going to come down here and choose our export window. And that's going to start exporting our song in its current state. And we can send it off to our guitar player after this. All right, we are over at our guitar player's house. He's got a basic project set up here in Logic. He's got about four mono tracks for us to start recording onto. And we're going to drag his copy that he got from the email we sent him of the song. And we're going to drag it on into his first track out here. We're going to drag it all the way to the start position and then release. And it's going to load up our file for us. It's also going to take the mono track that it was set on and turn it into stereo, as you can kind of see down here, right where this guy is. And we can double click on that as well, just to confirm that it's in fact a stereo track. Logic views tracks that are stereo as interleaves. So at first it can be kind of confusing. It looks like it's a mono track. All right, so we got a good starting point. We're going to arm some tracks and get ready to record some guitar solos. We've set audio track four up for our lead guitarist. We've armed the track. We've left the project beats per minute at its default since he's sending us an audio file. And we're ready to record some lead guitar. All 
right, Dave's done a great job on the guitar solo. It fits the vibe of the song perfectly, and now it's time to prepare it to send it back on over to us. So we've renamed Audio 4 Guitar Solo because our export window is going to export the selected track. So the most important thing we got to do first is just like we did on the other side, we need to make sure that our export ranges here really do start right at the beginning of the song. And at the end over here, we want to make sure that it includes at least all the material that we've recorded. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select our track guitar solo. We're going to come up to the file menu. We're going to navigate down to export and we're going to choose export one track as an audio file. Now, if you're working in another DAW like Pro Tools or Studio One or Logic or Ableton, it may say something different, but what you're after is you wanna export the track in its native format. So if you did a solo, for example, and it's in mono, you wanna export it as a mono file. If it's a keyboard part, for example, and it's in stereo, you wanna export it as a stereo file. Also, you wanna make sure that there are no effects on the file that you're sending them, simply because you wanna give the engineer on the other end, the one who's actually mixing the project, as much control as possible. So if you've got any inserts or anything, disable those before you actually do the export. All right, we're gonna choose one track as audio file and it's gonna bring up this window. The first thing we're gonna do is determine where it's gonna mix down to. This is just gonna go directly to his desktop. And then we got a couple choices to make here. One, trim silence at the file end simply means it's gonna stop recording after it gets done with the part we've recorded. And that's fine. The most important part is that it starts at the beginning of the wave and it prints silence all the way up until the part we've recorded. And then it includes that. So after that's done, trim and silence will be fine. It'll keep the size of the wave down a little bit. We're also gonna save it as a wave format because we wanna send the best possible quality back to our project. This means it also won't fit in an email. It's gonna to be too big for a regular email, so we're gonna to have to use one of our drive or cloud services that are attached to our email to make that work. They're completely free and more than large enough to trade files back and forth. We're gonna leave the bit depth at 16, and then we're gonna title it Dave's Guitar Solo. When we hit our export window, it's gonna export everything that our ranges had determined and it's gonna drop the resulting file onto his desktop. All right, we're back to the studio. Now it's time to check our email on our end. And there is the notification that he sent us his guitar solo wave. So we're gonna click on that and download his wave to our desktop. We're back inside our version of Cubase and we are ready to set up our project to receive Dave's guitar solo. So first we've got to build a track. We're going to come up here, hit the add track button. We're going to leave it at mono. We're going to title it guitar solo. And we're going to route it to the guitar solos bus. And now we're ready to drag Dave's guitar solo that we got from our online storage service into our project. We're simply going to drag that guy all the way into the very start of our project like we did before on the other side. And there is our finished guitar solo ready to be mixed. So even though we were tracking to an MP3, we were only using that as a reference for sizing for the project. But he sent us a high resolution WAV file. So it's ready to be used in our project with all the fidelity as if he had been right here tracking it. 